na changamoto ambazo ziko kule mashinani labda kwa, ambazo zinazuia sisi kupata huduma za kiafya sasa inakupatia ile motisha ya kusafiri kutoka huko mbali kuja mpaka katika Kajado referral kwa sababu unajua kwamba lazima madaktari wapo dawa zipo The goal for providing universal health care is about ensuring that people can access quality and affordable health care they need without financial hardships by 2030. If a country does not have the right personnel and right qualifications, they are likely to have a problem. And I will remember the day Agnes walked into my office and I knew as a person of passion someone was determined to deliver. I was convinced that what she wanted to tell me was good. The African Health Workforce Project was sponsored by PEPFA through CDC and implemented by Emory University in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Health Professional Regulatory Agencies in Kenya. The main goal for the project was to establish an electronic health workforce information system. We used to use a manual system. And uh, if I tell you it was hell, if you wanted to get a file for somebody, you could imagine you can even look for it for a whole month. In terms of tracking over 60,000 answers, using a manual process was a real toll order. At the click of the button, it was very hard for us to do that. When the system was deployed, we found that within a second, by a touch of a button, you can have information about somebody. We jumped from months, years, to seconds. So there are a number of key steps that uh, went to development of the system. We did business process analysis to uh, ensure that the processes are streamlined. We kept on adding features with needs as they come in until uh, this point where the system is quite robust and uh, has been used. We have had a number of uh, innovations. The first one is uh, the online services portal. A one-stop shop. Uh, a doctor has an account able to pay for your education, able to pay for your private practice license, uh, to, to apply for certificate of status, among other services. And the beauty about that is that it being mobile friendly, a doctor is able to do it anywhere. The system has greatly actually impacted in terms of our revenue generation. The revenue that we get from the online portal of our nurses has actually tripled. We have real-time data. We know where our nurses and midwives are at the click of the button in terms of their distributions, their qualifications, and even the, the good standing that they have for the councils. So when we were able to get that revenue, we were even able to, to enhance our operations. And I think if we analyze, you see this improvement every year. Previously, there was a challenge in tracking of healthcare workers. We are now able to say how many uh, healthcare workers graduated successfully and now uh, are ready to be deployed into the job market. That kind of precision was very easy with the new system and that has been able to give the government the ability to be able to be in control of the pharmaceutical profession. The illegal premises have disappeared, they can't survive in an electronic environment. The guys who have been registered can now thrive better in a controlled environment. Even if someone has come in as just an ordinary nurse, a nurse, we can easily know that they have already done some other forms of training. So we can actually deploy in the right place and they will be of more use in that way. One of the things that we are trying to do is to help them utilize the human resources information data to see how the, to map out these uh, health professionals into where they are working, um, see exactly what they are doing, what uh, the, the, their deployment areas, and also look at the disease outcomes as maybe uh, uh, as a result of the quality service delivery that they are giving. We would easily know the number of uh, personnel per day if we went to the system. Today we will know how many premises are registered. We know which institutions are registered, what cadre, because you have a health center, you have a maternity nursing home, you have a level three hospital, five, level five hospital, you know which hospitals are there. Then you also know which kind of staff you have in certain hospitals. And then you also know what services are being offered in which type of an hospital. So it is a dynamic system, and so it helps us make decisions very fast. 
it's a, it's a powerful tool. It's, it's, it's like a powerhouse. We've just begun in the country, but there's still a lot that needs to be done for it to be able to really be used like an empowerment system to make sure that the regulatory uh, system in this country are, are more efficient, uh, they're more reliable, and they're more acceptable to Kenyans and the public. If this system is adopted across the East Africa, that means the standards will be there will be a standardized way of regulating the clinical officers in the region and also in Africa. And it will also help in uh, setting standards for training so that now in the region we have one standardized system that is checking on the minimum entry requirements for somebody to be a clinical officer. The system will also track the students. So wherever you choose to train, whether in Kenya, Tanzania, or Uganda or in South Africa, wherever you are, you should be able to, to be tracked. The next level is to scale up the system to other African countries. A case study is Zambia, who shared the same challenges like Kenya. So the project was able to transfer the best practices and provide technical assistance to the Zambians. It was quite easy for Zambia to have the system uh, customized and finalized within two years, which was half the time that Kenya had taken. When I look back at where Kenya was in terms of um, system, I, I really wish that these uh, other countries would have an opportunity to have a system that makes it easy for them to work. Mm -hmm.